what really happened. Get me over Bowers. Joanna! Finally lead to one thing. I want to find out who really killed Vivian. The truth. The season finale of Deception. Next Monday, 10, 9 central here on NBC. Find out what time the first bell will ring at Columbia Public Schools after tonight's board decision. A sales tax proposal means a new emergency system for Columbia at what cost? And paying respects how the honor flight changed the life of one Missouri veteran. KMU 8 News at 10 starts now. From Studio 8A, coverage you can count on in high definition. This is KOMU 8 News at 10. There is a decision tonight on Columbia Public School start times. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Reed. And I'm Brittany Peeper. The school board reached a decision tonight before 9 o'clock. KOMU 8's Danielle Carter is live at the meeting with the results. Danielle, what they decide? About an hour and a half ago, the Columbia Public School Board voted for new school schedules with a vote of 9 to 1. This means Columbia Public High Schools will start at 9 and end at 4.05. In addition, Lee, Midway Heights, New Haven, Ridgeway and Benton, Rockbridge, and Two Mile Prairie Elementary Schools will begin at 740 and end at 240. Now, they, these have different start times and end times from the others because they have the longest elementary school runs. Other elementary schools will start at 820 and end at 320. Now, in the last meeting, research on sleeping patterns in teens came up in discussion, and one student agrees with this research. When the 720 start time was proposed back in January, everybody was outraged. Um, and now that the 9 a.m. start time is proposed, everyone's outraged again. Uh, but I think when you look at the facts, you can see that the 9 a.m. start time is far more flexible and it's just far more healthier for students. Now, while most board members agreed with the decision, they did express how difficult it was to make a final decision. Now, these plans will go into effect for the next school year. Also, on an interesting note, since I've tweeted about the new schedule changes, I've gotten a lot of replies. Now, interestingly enough, despite the one sophomore student who did speak out in favor of the changes, the replies have been mostly negative and some have been neutral. So we'll just have to wait and see how the public responds to these changes. Reporting live in Columbia, Danielle Carter, KOMU 8 News. So just to clarify again, students on the first tier of the system would get to school between 7.35 and 7.45 a.m. They would dismiss between 2.35 and 2.45 p.m. Students on the second tier would get to school between 8.25 and 8.35 in the morning, and they would dismiss between 3.25 and 3.35 p.m. And then the final tier, which would include high schools, would drop students off at school between 8.50 and 9 a.m. That would mean they would not get out of school until at least 4.05 in the afternoon. It felt like winter time today, didn't it? 35 degrees, our high temperature, where a typical high would be 53, so we were a good ways below average. Here's a look at live Doppler 8, first alert radar, and we can see the uh, clouds beginning to break up. There's some uh, light clouds a little further out to the west, but generally speaking, the heavy cloudiness has left us, at least for the time being. Here's what we're looking at temperature-wise. We're at 31 in Colombia, 33 in Mexico, 29 in Macon, and 30 at the Lake of the Ozarks. Overnight, skies will be variably cloudy. We'll have a morning time low down around 26 or 27 degrees. More on that forecast coming up for you on KOMU 8 News at 10. The trial for a Cole County woman accused of shaking a seven-month-old at her daycare began today. Shelly Richter allegedly shook Lane Schaefer back in 2010. Richter says she accidentally dropped Schaefer after tripping over another child. Today, jurors heard from Lane's parents, Jessica and Cole. They talked about how the incident affected Lane's health. The prosecution also showed photos of Lane in the hospital and video of him in physical therapy. Jurors also heard testimony from Lane's doctor, Douglas Boudreau. Richter faces up to 35 years in prison on those charges. Same story, different names. Today, KOMU 8 News received new information about Aspen Heights workers. Douglas Manley and three friends started working for Aurora Companies back on February 19th, almost a month after we first reported problems at Aspen Heights. Manley says they framed an entire duplex but were only paid for a third of their work. The next week, their boss, Tom Roach, told them Aspen Heights was pulling the plug and not paying them. Manley says he has 47 hours of unpaid work. We were told that there's no more money for us. 
and that we're not getting paid for the, the work that we did out of the house. I took pictures of everything that we did so that I could prove, hey, we were on this job, this is the project we worked on. Aspen Heights Director of Public Relations Stuart Watkins says it has not received billing from Aurora, Aurora companies, which means Aspen Heights cannot pay those workers. He also said the latest problems are not related to early, earlier issues with our energy workers not getting paid. Aspen Heights says as of March 4th, a majority of those workers have received their checks. Boone County citizens will vote on a 911 sales tax in less than a month. Keep Columbia Safe held a public meeting tonight to talk about that tax and what it would mean for emergency operations. KMU8's Gina Cook is here to tell us more. Gina. At tonight's forum, the Columbia Police Officers Association endorsed the tax, saying that cell phones are a big reason why it is needed. More than 75% of 911 calls in Boone County come from cell phones, but the number of call operators has not increased with changing technology. Officials say callers are sometimes on hold for more than a minute and even up to five minutes. A portion of the tax would help hire more operators to keep up with that demand. If I call 911 for my daughter has a medical emergency or someone's breaking into my house, I don't want to get an answer machine. I want to get a live person, an operator, so the Calvary can respond. I think our community deserves better than that. And in a catastrophe, a disaster, we need to be prepared. This tax will allow us to do that. The tax is 38 cents for every $100 spent and would also pay for a whole new call facility and equipment within two years. It is up for a vote on April 2nd. About 100 people showed up for a public meeting tonight at the ARC to discuss Medicaid expansion and health care reform. The nonpartisan Missouri Foundation for Health hosted the event to clarify facts about the much discussed topic. Missouri lawmakers must decide whether the state should expand its Medicaid program under the Affordable Care Act. 220,000 adults are currently uninsured in Missouri. Um, under the Medicaid expansion, there would be this brand new category for childless adults low-income, working families um, to, to have public health insurance coverage. Just being able to have insurance would change, my, would change my life drastically. Just being able to be insured and being able, I mean, even if I have a copay or, you know, a premium or whatever, that would be a blessing in my situation. The federal government has not set a deadline for states to decide whether they will expand. Governor Nixon supports Medicaid expansion. Two people are facing charges of first-degree murder and the death of a 60-year-old man found in the back of a pickup truck in St. Louis County. 52-year-old James Miller and 56-year-old Deborah Lewis are also charged with armed criminal action. Both are jailed without bond. The name of the victim has not been released. A southeast Missouri man was sentenced to a little more than eight years in prison for robbing six banks in three states, including Missouri, Iowa, and Oregon. 49-year-old Kenneth Dwayne Parker of Rockaway Beach must also pay about $22,000 in restitution. He pleaded guilty to the holdups last year. The out-of-state cases were transferred to Missouri after he was arrested in Sedalia during his final bank robbery. Other holdups happened in Eugene, Oregon and here in Columbia, Missouri. Next month, a documentary is coming to Columbia to celebrate Honor Flight. The film showcases the experience of two World War II veterans who took their trip to Washington, D.C. to visit the memorial in honor of their service. The documentary also shows the work of two other veterans who promote and raise money for the Honor Flight program. There will be a viewing of the film April 22nd at the crossing on Southland Drive. General admission tickets are available online for $10 and are free to World War II and Korean War veterans. After the break, we'll share the story of one Columbia veteran who took off on the Honor Flight experience. With Boundary Free TV from Mediacom, enjoy more ways to watch your favorite shows. You can record it in this room and then watch it in this room. With free on-demand Start Last Night Show today. Thousands of free programs you can watch anytime, plus HD channels. Even take the game on the road with BTN to go. And instead of seeing that, enjoy great reliability in any weather. Be careful, sir. Better TV is Boundary Free TV from Mediacom. Now that's what I call a test drive. Silverado, the most dependable, longest lasting full size pickups on the road. So what do you think? I'll take it. 
Truck Month continues at your Heart of Missouri Chevy dealer. Trade up and use your option package discount to get the 2013 Chevy Silverado All-Star Edition with a total value of $72.50. Plus, get 24-month, 24,000-mile maintenance at no charge from your Heart of Missouri Chevy dealers. Joe Schaefer is one of the men and women who helped send to Washington, D.C. to see the World War II Memorial during an honor flight. In this Sarah story, former KOMU reporter and anchor Sarah Hill, who is now with the Veterans United Network, tells us why Mr. Schaefer is a smiling soldier. But the kids would learn the language, uh, learn our language quicker because they could cuss up a storm after a little bit in English. <laughs> Joe Schaefer has the kind of smile that when you see it, you feel the corners of your own mouth turning up. <laughs> Mr. Schaefer is a World War II veteran. He served with the 92nd Field Artillery and 2nd Armored Division. Hell on wheel. This former door-to-door -door produce salesman <laughs> punctuates the end of a sentence with a giggle. And rolled into Berlin <laughs> on the Autobahn. <laughs> when he tells the story of how he sprained his ankle just weeks before D-Day. All our equipment was being loaded up, and we were in a softball game. I run, got a hit and run to first base and hit a little hole or something, and uh, tore a ligament in my ankle. D-Day. A bad ankle tear required a cast, and while this 22-year-old begged to go, doctors kept him away from the battlefield for two months. So in an odd turn of events, a pop fly a, and an ankle cast kept him from the, storming the beaches of Normandy of our outfit. and might have saved <laughs> his life. It wasn't a short time that all the paratroopers were coming back foot drop in that had landed uh, ahead of the uh, invasion. They were coming back with all limbs with casts on and everything. So they'd ask me, what happened to you? And I'd say, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Mr. Schaefer found a way to find humor in his service. During the Battle of the Bulge, then Corporal Schaefer drove what's called a half track. It's just a, a, a personnel carrier. It's got armored around. It had uh, four-wheel drive and everything, and you could really go anywhere almost with it. Men, tanks, and vehicles are lined up for the presidential inspection. A vehicle he once paraded in the Potsdam Conference in front of Stalin, Churchill, and Truman. Mr. Schaefer can no longer see the faces on these pictures. Legally blind from macular degeneration, viewing old photos is difficult, even with special equipment. We lived in Berkeley after we got married. Despite his disability, this smiling soldier still finds joy in photos from England, Africa, and Germany. <laughs> 3144. I'll be darn. But there's one memory that wipes the smile from even his face. He was killed uh, uh, in, uh, in Europe. Uh, he was uh, younger than me, and uh, he just he had just gotten in. and. Uh, Sent him over there, and he was killed on May the 4th of 40, 45, which was four days before the war ended. Paul Schaefer was 22. He never made it home from the war, but memories still bring a familiar expression to Joe's face. <laughs> Paul served his country, and now perhaps his brother gets to carry his smile. That was Sarah Hill and Scott Schaefer of the Veterans United Network. Central Missouri Honor Flights resume May 7th, flying more heroes just like the Smiling Soldier. Fizzled out why a sugary drink ban is no longer set in stone. And a look at a weather forecast that will gradually warm us up to tolerable temperatures by the end of the week. Coming up on KOMU 8 News at 10. Slam dunk deals during the madness of March. I'd be happy if we could call it a March sale, but that's copyrighted. But we've still got great deals. The 2013 Escape or Fusion with Power Everything for just $19,995. These are brand new cars with full warranties, and you can buy one for less than a used car. All these are going on during Rick Ball's March Score big and save more at March Madness. Don't say it. <laughs> no matter what you call the sale, we'll always save you more money at Rick Ball Ford. Rick Ball Ford Boonville and Rick Ball Ford Lincoln Sedalia. When you use things from a hundred years ago, it's hard to keep up. 
That's why we need to update Missouri's 100-year-old energy regulations that are stopping investment in modern infrastructure. We could create thousands of jobs, but we need modern regulations that protect consumers and allow for new investment. Text ENERGY to 877-877. Let's ask Missouri legislators to update our energy regulations. We can't create jobs for the future if we're living in the past. When you take shortcuts, it shows. We don't run like that. We build John Deere equipment the way we always have. The right way. Times change. Our principles don't. You don't just have our word on it. You've got our name on it. That's how we run. Nothing runs like a deer. Visit Farm Power Lawn and Leisure on the Business Loop in Columbia. Chrysler is having their showcase event. When engineering is beautiful in its own right, and you have something others covet, there's no off switch on the spotlight. How you admire all this depends simply on your point of view. Hurry in for great offers at the Chrysler Showcase event. During the Showcase event, get 0% APR for 84 months on the 2013 Chrysler 200 Limited Sedan. The First Alert Weather Cam is brought to you by your Heart of Missouri Chevy dealers. Now, your live Doppler 8 First Alert Weather with Chief Weathercaster Dave Schmidt. Well, after a relatively warm weekend, we got kind of a wintertime shock again today, didn't we? With a morning time low at 30 degrees, we only topped out today at 35. And it's still very much wintertime in portions of the upper Great Lakes, uh, the upper peninsula of Michigan. Marquette getting 15 inches of snow there today, and it's still coming down from everything we're reading and hearing. Here in mid-Missouri, it's been a mostly cloudy day, but now we can see that the clouds are breaking up a little bit. So we're gonna have a variably cloudy sky for tonight and for much of the day tomorrow as well. Now 31 degrees, we'll call it a partly cloudy sky. In mid-Missouri, eight miles per hour wind out of the west-northwest. And our humidity is, uh, with a dew point temperature, fairly low, 24 degrees as uh, a measure of moisture in the air. At the lake, 30 degrees, 34 in Jefferson City. Macon has 29. Boonville at 30 degrees. Mexico at uh, 33. Fulton is at 31. And Herman at 33 degrees as well in the northern section of Gasconade County. Our next weather maker is off to the west, as it typically is. But we've got some mild temperatures to look forward to with a high-pressure center that's uh, developing over the state of Nevada and Utah. That will gradually move into mid-Missouri. But until it does, toward the mid or latter part of the week, we're going to be kind of cool. We'll be gradually warmer tomorrow than we were today by about 10 degrees. But then we'll hold probably in the middle 40s for Tuesday and Wednesday, the way things are looking. But things could be much worse. We're going to be dry for the entire period. Temperatures will moderate. That's good news. So tomorrow, expect to see... Uh, Mostly cloudy, sometimes partly cloudy at other times. We should see some sunshine. 44 in Mexico, Fayette at 46 degrees. Down to the south of us, we're looking at the Lake of the Ozarks with a temperature tomorrow at 49. That might be a bit uh, optimistic. Then uh, Jefferson City at 48 and California at 49 degrees as well. Boonville at 45 and Fulton probably around 45 or 46. Here's a look at my live Doppler 8 first alert forecast. Going to be kind of cold overnight, 26, 27 degrees for your out-the-door forecast tomorrow morning. Expect to see some clouds in that sky. Then for the day tomorrow, Tuesday, variably cloudy, a little warmer, 46 degrees for the afternoon high. Over the next three days, gets a little better. Not so much on Wednesday, but on Thursday, partly cloudy, 59. That's almost 60. Makes a big difference. Then on Saturday, or Friday and Saturday, we're going to be in the comfortable 60s. Ah, won't that be nice? And that's a look at the weather. All right, thanks, Dave. Very nice. <laughs> Tension escalates in Afghanistan after a deadly day and new claims against the U.S. But first, here are your lottery numbers. Good luck. What do you get when you cross the ninth annual event with the 21st Century Core of Discovery? In a word, a lecture, or two words, I guess. We'll preview that tomorrow. And it's going to continue to be a sunny next couple of days for us across the Missouri. We'll look at uh, how high these temperatures are going to get by the end of the work week. Join us every weekday morning for KOMU 8 News Today. We start at 4.30.
March at Makash means more for your money, more for your trade. The all-new Malibu, Cruise, and Sonic, only at Bob Makash, now come with a guaranteed extra $1,000 trade-in bonus cash above all other factory incentives. This is an exclusive Bob Makash offer only. Simply trade in your drivable 1999 or newer vehicle, any make, any model, and receive an extra $1,000 trade-in bonus cash. Chevrolet makes the car, but Bob Makash makes the difference. Hold on to me as we go. It's time to pursue our dreams, to chase what we believe in. It's time to work, to give it our very all and not give up. American Family Insurance believes your dreams deserve the best protection. That's why we're committed to being there for you every step of the way. The Financial News is brought to you by Downtown Appliance Home Center. Providing appliances and personal service to Mid-Missouri for over 60... Small gestures can make a big difference. Give back to education by playing Harley-Davidson Scratchers, and you could win cash or a new motorcycle. Play it forward with the Missouri Lottery. Hi, welcome to Toyota's number one for everyone sales event. I'm Jan. Hi, we're here to get a safe, reliable car for college. We have lots to choose from. Let's take a look. I'm so psyched out of my mind. <laughs> you coming? Yes, Father. Lease a new 2013 Corolla LE for only $149 per month. Or get an amazing 0% APR financing for 60 months. Plus, every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care. And while you're here, check out the all-new RAV4. Toyota, let's go places. It took months and months to get approved, but today's last-minute decision caused the plan to fizzle out. New York City's controversial soft drink ban has been put on hold. A New York Supreme Court judge ruled today the city could not begin enforcing the ban, which was to take effect tomorrow. In the ruling, the judge says the regulations would not be enforced evenly throughout the city under the plan. Establishments from restaurants to food carts couldn't sell sugar drinks larger than 16 ounces. New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg, who proposed the ban, said the judge was wrong and that the ban would eventually prevail. Tensions are high in Afghanistan tonight. First, two Americans were killed and at least 10 wounded by a man dressed as a security officer. It's the latest inside attack on an Afghan military base. Also, tempers flared on a road where American troops killed two Afghan civilians. The men were apparently speeding toward a U.S. convoy and adding to all that tension, Afghan President Hamid Karzai now claims the U.S. is stirring Taliban violence and as an excuse to stay longer. U.S. officials insist the official handover of Afghanistan security will continue this spring. And Japan is marking the second anniversary of the earthquake and tsunami that devastated the country. This monument along the coast near Sendai City honors the more than 20,000 people who died. The country also observed a moment of silence at the mo moment the quake struck. Recovery efforts continue and thousands of people are still reported missing. Rock Bridge beat Blue Springs last season during its state title run. Coming up in sports, Rock Bridge is looking for a repeat this year. Update your home and save big during the Menards construction sale. Keep your lawn growing strong with Menards Premium Lawn Fertilizers. A 17-pound bag of premium crabgrass preventer with lawn food feeds for up to two months, $8.99 after rebate. All GE garbage disposals are on sale. They're easy to install and feature sound insulation. This half-horsepower model is $59. The three-quarter horsepower model with extra-large grinding capacity is $89. Save big money at Menards. Constant flash flooding, wow. which can ravage communities with up to 30 inches of driving rain in minutes. Hey, honey, yeah, I'm on my way. Water or smoke damage can often take you by surprise. Uh, I, I, I gotta call you back. But our experts restore your peace of mind with our quick response, clear communications, and thoughtful care for your home. Next on our countdown, wildfire. When your home has damage, big or small, call Service Master Clean. 
Service Master clean. Peace of mind restored. It's that time of year again for the Lazy Boy Chairs by the Pear Sale at Bumgartner's. Pick a pair of Lazy Boy recliners for as little as $559 and have them last for years and years to come. No, you're not seeing double. You get two great Lazy Boys for the price of one. And with Bumgartner's, you get the right style selection and quality, plus hometown hospitality from people who've been satisfying customers since 1949. Get what you deserve at the Lazy Boy Chairs by the Pear Sale at Baumgartner's. Two locations, Columbia and Avoz. Don't miss it. Close captioning of KOMU 8 News is brought to you by Missouri Cancer Associates, your comprehensive cancer care center. Wazoo fans, it's finally here. Your Tigers host their inaugural home opener in the SEC against the two-time national champion South Carolina Gamecocks. The historic weekend starts with Friday night's Gold Rush game starting at 6 p.m. The first 500 fans will receive a free commemorative gold t-shirt. Tickets are just $5 for adults and $3 for youth and seniors. Be a part of baseball history this weekend, Friday at 6 p.m., Saturday at 2 p.m., and Sunday at 1 p.m. It's time for the madness of March. Due to copyright rules, we can't say March, but we've still got plenty of great deals. Save money and gas, too, on a great new Chevrolet Malibu, Sonic, Spark, or Impala. A new 2013 Chevy Cruze is yours for $289 a month. Brand new cars with full warranties for less than you can buy a used car during Rick Ball's March. Just once, I wish I could say March. Ryan, I think the folks get the idea. Now's a great time to buy a vehicle at Rick Ball. Rick Ball, Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, and Cadillac in Boonville. Now, from the Ford Sports Desk, KOMU 8 Sports with Chris Gervino. Hi, everyone. Rockbridge takes on Blue Springs in the Class 5 Girls State Basketball Semifinals Friday. KOMU 8's Mahir Bagot reports that state championship playoff territory is familiar territory for the Bruins. Cheetle now. Three ball. Yes. Rockbridge beat Blue Springs to win the state championship last year. Now, it's time for a rematch in the semifinals. Well, we basically have the same team from last year, so we're just kind of using that as an advantage. Forget about last year. The Bruins blew them out by 32 this year, too. And like it's been all season, the game plan is to attack inside. It's no secret we're pretty much taller than every team that we play, so uh, we definitely try and take advantage of that. If we didn't, we'd be a little bit crazy, I think. It's already crazy. The Rockford has come this far despite season-ending injuries to Hannah Dressler and Bree Porter. They want to win it for those kids as much or more than they want to win it for themselves. It's a, very much a family atmosphere, and uh, it's kind of like a, a fallen soldier in a way. You know, they want to fight for them. Uh, Blue Springs has their own motivation. They're tired of finishing three. second four Rock years in a row. Rock. They use that as a motivation, and our motivation is to beat them, to stop them, so that they can't get that first state championship. This is Rockbridge's third trip to the semifinals in the past six years, creating a culture of winning. Not just Rockbridge girls basketball, but any other sport in our school has been doing really good, so everyone expects us to win it all. Oh, yeah. I mean, our classmates are always like, you guys going to do a repeat, blah, blah, blah. And I mean, we hope to each year, and um, hopefully we can this year again, but we have to get past Blue Springs first. Of course, if those two girls can combine for 35 points like they did in last year's title game, the Bruins have a good shot. Mahir Begut, KOMU 8 Sports, Columbia. Mahir, thank you very much. Tomorrow night, a story on the Hickman boys basketball team back in the state semifinals for the first time in a long time. The regular season is over. Postseason play about to begin for the Mizzou Tigers. Mizzou completed regular season play with a two-point loss at Tennessee Saturday. An all-too-familiar script for the Tigers who had the lead on the road in the second half before struggling down the stretch and suffering another setback. The Tigers 2-7 and seven on the road in SEC play. Now they get set for the conference tournament later this week in Nashville. We played a, played a desperate team on Saturday and who's been playing great. I mean, you look at that team last, they beat Kentucky by 30 in that building. They beat Florida in that building. So we had a chance to win the game. So, I mean, we're going to sit here and beat our guys up. I mean, we didn't win it. We, sh you know, we felt good about having a chance to win it. But you got to say we're playing pretty good. It's a matter of doing it. You know, uh, we can say that we're going to do better next game, but until we're actually in that situation and make it happen, you know, you really can't speak on it. And I think we're a good enough team to learn from this last game. Anytime you come out and you play, you play hard, you give your, you give your all for 40 minutes and you come out with the, with the loss, it's going to be frustrating. But, you know, um, just like a win, you have 24 hours to think about each game, and after that you got to let it go and get ready for the next one because uh, now if you lose, you go home. So we can't let any type of frustration. Wearing us. Um, 
made us more aware of what we have to continue to work on, and that's what we're going to continue to do. Um, heading into the game this week, um, you know, we just going to watch film and know our know our weaknesses and try to perfect those. Well, Missouri's senior co-captain Lawrence Bowers has been named to the SEC men's basketball community service team. Bowers, a redshirt senior, has been a part of Missouri's community relations efforts the last five years. The Missouri football team begins spring practice tomorrow afternoon. Tiger coach Gary Pinkle says he's excited about the start of spring ball. Pinkle also told me he is excited about Henry Josie. The Tiger running back ran a 4.44 40-yard dash in his first timed run since major knee surgery. He suffered an injury two years ago in a game against Texas. That 2011 season, Josie had run for almost 1,200 yards and led the Big 12 in rushing before suffering the injury. We'll have more on Josie and the Tigers with the start of spring football practice tomorrow. That's sports. Furniture Row's warehouses are overstocked. That means great savings for you in every store. Right now, you'll get a free HDTV with qualifying purchase. And through Wednesday, March 13th only, get two years interest-free. Furniture Row, your Tempur-Pedic elite retailer. It's not the miles. It's how you live them at Joe Mockin's Volkswagen of Columbia. Come see the largest selection of Volkswagen vehicles in mid-Missouri. Passat, Jetta, Beetle, over 200 new in stock. And get three years or 36,000 miles of no-charge scheduled maintenance. Or check out our large selection of pre-owned vehicles, including World Auto Certified Pre-Owned. And search